What are the limits of computation in the real world? We're talking here not about what in theory it's possible to compute given endless amounts of time and storage space, but instead the practical limits imposed by the laws of physics. One of these is known as Bremermann's limit, after the German-American mathematician and biophysicist Hans Joachim Bremermann. It's based on two fundamental principles. The first is the equivalence of mass and energy as given by Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, where c is the speed of light. The second is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which expresses the precision with which certain pairs of quantities, such as energy and time and mass and momentum, can be known. Bremermann's limit is the maximum rate at which data can be processed by any isolated material system. It's equal to c squared over h, where h is Planck's constant, and comes out to be about 1.36 times 10 to the 50 bits per second per kilogram. We're not used to seeing processing capacity expressed in this way. Normally we read about how many bits per second a chip or a computer as a whole can process. That's because Bremerman's limit far exceeds the processing rate of anything humans have ever made, or are ever likely to make, in the foreseeable future. It is, however, of interest in the design of cryptographic systems that are secure against brute force searches that try to crack secret codes and passwords by running through all possible combinations. Imagine a computer as massive as the Earth that can work at Bremerman's limit. It would be capable of roughly 10 to the 75 computations every second. At this rate, it could break a typical 128-bit cryptographic key in less than 10 to the minus 36 of a second and a 256-bit key in about two minutes. However, cracking a 512-bit key, even for a planet-sized behemoth working at the computational speed limit, would take an impossibly long 10 to the 72 years. Another and related extreme limit on what's computationally possible in nature is the Bekenstein bound. Named after Mexican-born Israeli-American physicist Jacob Bekenstein, who came up with the idea in the early 1980s. It refers to the maximum amount of information that can be contained within a given volume of space. In defining his bound, Bekenstein had in mind the most extreme objects in the universe, black holes. Specifically, he was looking into the problem of what happens when something falls into a black hole. It used to be thought that once having entered a black hole, nothing could ever escape. However, Stephen Hawking proposed a way that information might be extracted, leading to the possibility of using a black hole as the most extreme data storage or computational device, with a storage density equal to the Bekenstein bound. MIT engineer and physicist Seth Lloyd calculated that the ultimate laptop formed by compressing a kilogram of matter into a black hole three times 10 to the minus 27 meters across, would be able to perform five times 10 to the 50 operations per second. On the downside, being a submicroscopic black hole, it would evaporate in a flash of gamma rays due to Hawking radiation in about 10 million trillionth of a second, making it less than ideal for everyday use. At the other end of the scale, Lloyd figured, if all the matter in the observable universe were turned into a black hole computer, it would be capable of 10 to the 90 operations per second and have a lifetime of 2.8 times 10 to the 139 seconds before Hawking radiation caused it to evaporate. In that time, it would be able to perform 2.8 times 10 to the 229 operations, though given that the computer would be coextensive with all of physical reality, it's hard to know what the purpose and nature of those operations would be.